Hi guys, this is Neil. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be painting a collection of mini breads which I'll go through from drawing right through painting. I'm going to go straight to drawing all of the breads first. The first one is shaped like a croissant. It's super easy to draw. I always like to draw a fat football shape as a guide first. And once I've done that, I divided the area from the middle out. Then I also curved the edges to make it nice and puffed up. You can also draw this from the side and to do that, I used the same method, but this time I draw the curve of the fold facing one side, so here the left side is a little bit more exposed. Next I'm going to draw the cone bread and for this I'd like to start with a round oval continuing with a plump triangle to the bottom and then I'm going to add some unfinished oval shapes within the triangle until I reach the bottom. You can also start by drawing a cone first then finishing off the same way and you can also play with the angles on this one. So if you don't want the filling to be too visible you can make the top flatter so it looks like you're looking at it from the side. Next is the custard bun and this one is really easy. I just use half a circle shape as guide then I divide into a few sections with tiny triangles on top and to make this one plump as well I make sure that the lines are slightly curved for all of the edges. For the bagel I'm going to draw two of these so I can play around with the angle. So for one of them I'm going to draw from the side and the other one leaning on the first bagel which makes it front on. For the one on the side I started with an oval then I make another oval on top for the hole and for the second one I made it more of a circle with a hole in the middle like a donut but to make it look more like a bagel I added lines for creases along the middle. For the baguette I'm going to start with a long oval followed with sharp tips on either ends to give it more of a traditional look and for the cuts I make it look like a curvy diamond shape similar to a backwards S and I just follow the size according to the bread. Next I'm going to draw a plain dinner roll and for this I just draw circles and then I add cuts on top. I think that the cuts make it look more interesting and you can also play with where the cut is facing to give it some perspective. For the pull apart bread you can think of it as a rectangular block which is then divided into three with arches along the side and the front followed with curved lines at the top. Next are the breadsticks and for this I just draw out squiggly lines and put them on top of each other. So before I paint I always like to start by drawing out the guides first just so I know the rough placement of what I want to paint. And I'm just going to draw this very lightly so I can move objects easily without taking too much time. And once I'm happy with the placement, I then start drawing the folds and creases and clean out some of the lines. And the rest of the method is practically the same as what I went through before, so we're just going to move straight to painting. I'm going to start with three color mixtures for the bread. So for the first one, I'm going to create a light yellow color and for this I used a mix of lemon yellow, John Brilliant and yellow ochre. And for the next one, I'm going to use a mixture of burnt sienna and cadmium orange for a golden brown. And for a slightly muted brown, I also mixed in burnt sienna with yellow ochre. I'm going to first start with a light yellow color and I'm going to paint per section of the bread while leaving some negative spaces on the curvy part. Then when the paint is slightly damp but drying, I added the golden brown mix from the burnt sienna and cadmium orange and I paint this very sparingly since the base color is still wet so the paint will keep spreading. I also soften the edges with my brush and wait for the paint to be at the damp stage again so the paint won't spread too fast. Then I added a thicker consistency of the burnt sienna and yellow ochre to place it at the center of each section. I also added some at the bottom and then I soften the edges so the paint can spread naturally creating a soft transition. For this next one, I'm going to do the same thing again since they're both curved the same way but in a different shape. So I just placed the light yellow color while leaving some negative space. I also left out the area for the filling which I'm going to paint as a sausage later on but you can also add a chocolate filling. And once I'm done with the light yellow, I added the golden brown mix per section while leaving some of the light yellow near the creases and also the negative space from before. Then I built up the intensity with a thick consistency burnt sienna and yellow ochre. 
Once the first one is completely dry, I can see that the colors faded slightly, so I added what's left on my brush to the previous one to build up on the baked part of the bread. I'm going to paint the custard bun next and I'm going to use the same colors again but this time since there are no sections I place the negative spaces at the top part of each of the cuts and some near the almonds. I also left out the almonds white so I can paint it later on. Once I've placed the yellow I then build on the color again using the golden brown and then the darker brown but I still want the previous colors to show through so I make sure to add the colors sparingly each time and as you see just by using the same colors you can apply this to many different shapes and you'll be able to create different types of breads. You can also play with the ratio which can make the browns look slightly different. Then I waited for the paint to dry then I add the light yellow color again to paint on the little triangles. Moving on to the bagels now, I changed the ratio slightly by adding a bit more Jean Brilliant than the lemon yellow and yellow ochre, so the color is a little bit warmer, and I apply this to the bottom part of the bagel only, then continuing with a mix of yellow ochre and burnt sienna, and I just let the paint mingle with each other, then near the top I added the brown mix with the cadmium orange so the color doesn't look too flat. But as I apply this one, I try to stop before I reach the hole so I can add a bit more of the first yellow mix since the bottom part of the bread is peeking through. I'm going to use the same mixes for the next bagel, so the only difference is where I place the light brown mix which I'm going to place at the bottom half and along the hole near the creases. For all of the shiny breads, I try to always leave out some negative spaces which are in the shape of the curves of the bread to enhance the volume, but if it's a little bit difficult to do that, we can still adjust it at the end with some white gouache, so don't stress out if you forget. Next, I'm going to paint the breadsticks, and for this, I want to make the colors lighter since there are no egg wash, and I'm using the ratio with more Jean Brilliant as the base layer. Then I added a medium to thin consistency of burnt sienna and yellow ochre to paint some dots along the middle part of the bread, making sure that the line from the dots are a little bit crooked so it looks nice and rustic. Then once I'm done, I soften the colors slightly using a clean damp brush to spread some of the colors since the base color is already slightly dry for this one. Next I'm going to paint the pull apart bread and for this I'm going to color in the arches per section first to separate the shapes. Then I added a thin consistency mix of burnt sienna and yellow ochre along the top part of the arches as well as the bottom leaving a section of the bread with the light yellow base. Then I'm going to continue using the yellow base color again to link the arches to the color I'm going to place at the top along with the division of each section. Then after that I'm going to add in a mix of burnt sienna and cadmium orange and a medium to thick consistency to paint the top. For the baguette, I'm going to use the same base color as before with more Jean Brilliant in the ratio, but I'm going to apply it to the cuts of the bread this time. Then I'm going to continue straight to using the burnt sienna and yellow ochre mix to paint the rest of the bread, leaving out the cuts that I've painted earlier. Then I added more burnt sienna to the same mix, and I'm going to apply a darker brown along the tips of the baguette to make it look more baked than the rest of the bread. For the dinner rolls, I'm going to use the same light Jean Brilliant mix but in a thinner consistency and I'm going to place this all over both the dinner rolls separately of course. I'm only painting this thinly so it won't take too long for the color to dry. Then once it's dry, I added the burnt sienna and yellow ochre mix in a medium to thin consistency. First applying it to the top, then softening it as I get towards the bottom, making sure that the cut has a clean separation of colors. I also realized that at this point the composition looks a bit too empty along the left side so I decided to add another breadstick and then I'm just going to paint it the same way as before. 
Now we're on to the fun part, which is adding the fillings as well as toppings for the bread. I'm only going to add them to a few of these so it won't look too overcrowded. So for the sausage, I'm going to introduce a new color here, which is Quinn Opera, which I mixed in with a little bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre together to create a slightly pinkish brown. And I'm going to fill in the area using thin strokes directing towards the top center. I'm also going to take some of this color and add a touch of Jean Brilliant with a lot of water to create a thin consistency and I'm going to use this to paint the almond slices. Then switching to my size zero brush, I mix in burnt sienna with rose matter to line the almond slices very thinly as almond skins. I am also going to use the same color in a thin consistency to paint some of the edges making sure to separate the triangles for the custard mud. For the breadsticks, I want to turn it into a cheesy garlic bread. So for the parsley, I have here sap green, which I mix with whatever brown I have left in my palette to tone it down. I ended up using the sausage color and I'm just going to paint specks or dots with my small brush along the front of the breadsticks. Then I used the golden brown mix from before but with more cadmium orange and I used it to paint more specks to create a baked cheese color. Then I'm also going to add some lemon yellow to the mix and paint some specks for added color as well. I want to give a bit of poppy seeds to one of the bagels, so for that I used a mixture of ivory black and mineral violet. And again, I'm going to paint dots with my small brush. I don't want the consistency to be too thick for this or else the seeds will look out of place due to the contrast in value. For this one, I make sure I don't add any poppy seeds at the bottom part, which also means the area peeking through the hole. For the next bagel, I'm going to leave it plain, but I want to enhance the creases. So I used a mixture of rose matter with burnt sienna and yellow ochre to draw the creases out. And then I also decided to soften it slightly with a clean damp brush so I can move the paint around since I felt like it stood out too much. I am also going to use the same color to clean out the edges of the butter roll as well as the cone bread so each of the folds look nice and separated. Next, I'm going to add some mineral violet to the previous mix to create a really dark brown and I'm going to use this to paint the tips of the baguette again but this time I want to paint specks to create a bit of a crackly texture. I'm also going to apply it to one side of the cuts to show that the area is slightly deeper and I'm going to add a slightly thinner consistency of the same color along the middle part of the baguette and between the cuts as the crackly texture again. Then using a very thin consistency of the same mix, I'm going to paint specks at the center of each cut to give it a bit of texture. And I'm going to do the same with the dinner roll, but I want to add the color at the top part as well as the bottom where the bread touched the baking pan. Then using a thicker consistency of the same color, I'm also going to apply a bit of shadow to show that the cut has a deeper surface. So I'm mostly done with the bread, so I'm just going to erase any outlines that I have left with my pencil. Then I'm going to fix up some of the edges of each of the breads to redefine them as well as adding finishing touches. I also decided to intensify the color of the pull apart bread for the top part using burnt sienna and cadmium orange since it's looking a little bit dull. Then to finish everything off, I'm going to use some white gouache to paint some of the highlights that I've accidentally gone over with paint. Then I'm also going to use a dry brush technique with a thick consistency white gouache to paint some flower specks on the rustic breads like the baguette din rolls and also the breadsticks. sticks. 
And that's pretty much it. This is the completed bread collection. But before I go, I want to announce that I have a new Skillshare class out, which I'll be painting a larger version of some of the breads that I've painted here in much more detail. And I'm also going to be sharing with you my go-to watercolor palette for the perfect golden brown bread, which can be applied to many breads, as you can see from this tutorial, but in much more detail. So if you're interested, please join me in this class. If you've never been a member yet, you can go to the link that I've left in the description box for a free two months membership. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and learned something new. I personally love painting breads because they're so fun and they come in so many varieties. Anyway, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!